Anton, Iron United here. It's just myself on my lonesome tonight giving you our review on the game tonight. You've just witnessed West Ham draw two each with Brighton and Hove Albion at the London Stadium. Um, disappointed. I mean, disappointed solely down to the fact of the two goals we conceded. So um, what we'll do is we'll do a quick rewind and talk to you about the starting lineup. What was my thoughts on the starting lineup? I said in the fan zone video we do before the game that I was kind of excited to see that Carroll was starting his first game in a year. I thought it was time that he ordered something back and I just didn't think Perez offered us much um, in the last few last month or so since we've seen him really coming on or starting. Um, but I was really massively disappointed in Andy Carroll today. But to be fair, um, we can't really blame Andy Carroll because it just seems to be that West Ham and Pellegrini's style does not suit Andy Carroll. And today's first half was a prime example of that. West Ham weren't looking to for the long ball, weren't looking for the balls into the box very often. Um, the, the sort of play we play is play the ball on, on the feet, on the ground. And yeah, we know Carroll can play on the ground, but it just wasn't his day to day, and nor was it the, the team were looking for him, to be honest. Um, and if that's if that's the way that West Ham are planning to move forward, um, then I kind of see the point of why we wouldn't want to start Carroll, to be honest. And maybe it's probably better to bring him on as an impact sub moving forward. But I get why Pellegrini done it because for me personally, I just don't know what Perez offers. Um, and as we moved into the second half, to be honest, we've seen the the. What Perez does not offer um, for me, it's just it's just not good enough. I think I've seen enough now. Um, I, I do think I've seen enough. I don't think it's um, he's particularly um, suited to the Premier League. You know, maybe he's got great history playing in uh, the Spanish league when he scored lots of goals. But for me, it's it's just he, he looks really weak on the ball. He looks like he kind of sometimes doesn't make effort or. He doesn't run. He doesn't make. He doesn't make specific runs. He's a striker who scores goals. You're looking for them to dart, crossing over the defender, trying to get in those um, pockets of of uh, past the, the centre halves, and he just doesn't seem to be making those runs. And there was a couple of times in the second half, in particular, the ball came to him, and his first touch was just so heavy all the time. But when you're getting a run of games, you don't expect that to happen all the time. But it seems to be all the time when it comes to Perez. Sounds like I'm digging him out. I slightly am. I'm just a bit disappointed with him. Um, but with regards to our starting lineup, I was glad to see Zavaleta back. Um, definitely made a, a bit of a difference. Um, but unfortunately, um, our in the well, sorry, what I should say is that obviously with Andy Carroll starting about two minutes before um, he did uh, the first half stopped. We seen Perez warming up, so it was a really strong sign that uh, Perez was going to come on at half time for Andy Carroll. Um, first half was non-existent to be honest for both teams um, Fabianski was demanding in the box I thought he was great in the first half not had to do much but just just controlling the defence which is obviously something we've missed for the last couple of years um, unfortunately though that didn't happen in the second half because in quick succession Brighton found themselves 2-0 up in the space of um, two minutes with Stevens scoring a goal um, where I felt like just from a set piece we should have put the ball we should have put the ball out um, further than what it did it landed onto Stevens uh, right foot just inside the 18 yard line and he smashed into the bottom corner and to be fair to him he did take the ball really well it's just the fact that he shouldn't really be getting the ball at that stage especially with the, the, the strong big strong lads we've got in the defence and then uh, Diop found himself kind of lost to be honest in the box for the second set piece which um, the ball got in behind him and found Duffy just unmarked and he took it well again to be fair but just really disappointed in the in the manner on how we um, conceded those goals again talking about it um, Perez didn't offer anything when he came on uh, as, as a sub but two players that did come on as a sub is um, Mark Noble and Mikel Antonio who came on for Snodgrass and Obiang now Obiang um, for me I love, I think he's a great player, I've, I've always liked him, I've always rated him, but I've not seen much of him, to be honest, over the last month or so. Um, I don't think he's been playing the best football, to be honest, and a lot of people out there are calling for Obiang to start over Noble, but, you know, what, I mean, Noble came on and made a difference, he did, him and Antonio made an absolute massive difference today. Albeit, you people could say, oh, it's against Brighton and Hove Albion, but it doesn't matter, we drew two each with him and he beat us earlier on in the season, so... Um, 
the minute that Noble and Antonio came on, it just looked like we had better shape moving forward. Antonio um, was just into what he declares himself as beast mode, just on the attack, on the attack, on the attack down the wings, putting their players under pressure, in particular Bernardo, who was causing us a little bit of problems in early in the second half. Um, and we've seen that we were causing them problems because Chris Hutton whipped him off and, and uh, replaced him um, because Antonio was just causing him utter havoc. But what was great about it was Mark Noble found the ball in his own half and just found the channel run from Mark Arnautovic. Pinpoint, perfect ball into the box. Mark Arnautovic used his strength and hit the ball in between the keeper's legs into the net to make it 2-1. And again, within two minutes, <coughs> Antonio hit beast mode, <laughs> beast mode, tacked down the right-hand side, got the ball into the box, looked up, found Arnautovic, took one touch and smashed it into the back of the net to make it 2 each. We had so much momentum at that point. Um, and this is where we really found that Anderson started to come out of his shell in this game and really was attacking the Brighton defence, making, you know, uh, making a lot of, of of attacking moves and to be honest we had a few chances Declan Rice found himself just on the edge of the box he took a couple of extra touches and hit it and hit the side netting for me I just think he should have shot the first time he got access to the ball but hey oh that's his style of play and, and you can't blame him he's a fantastic player um, all in all I am I can't help but feel disappointed to each at home to Brighton I just really wanted us to continue something but we got sucker punched with those two goals we conceded. It's really disappointing. Um, so to come back from that and, and get a point, you you just have to take it. You just have to take it. Um, which uh, So a point will do. First game of uh, 2019, and we're unbeaten. So I'll take that. That's a positive. Um, players, uh, we could quickly just brief chat about... Um, the transfer window. I mean, Nasri never came on. He was on the bench, and I thought at one point we would probably see him. But you know, who am I? I'm sitting here, and not the manager of West Ham and Pellegrini. I trust. So we didn't see Nasri. So we'll be looking forward to seeing him. But I think we will dip our hands into our pocket and bring in some players. I think we need to bring in some players. To be honest, I think we've gone so long and done really well with the squad, but we're starting to show signs of maybe you know now we need the next depth in squad, which we don't have because the squad's half injured so um, we need to maybe bring in and they're all long term injuries so we need to bring in some some players um, for me I've said it all along I think I, I'm not a fan of Ogbonna if they had an alright game tonight well, Diop was probably the worst centre half out of the two of them but um, we need to bring someone in to replace um, Ogbonna because I just don't rate him at all and I think we really missed Balbuena and we have missed Balbuena since he's been injured massive massive um, massive player he's been for West Ham so we really really need him back as soon as possible Anyway, do agree with me, get your comments in below, hit the like up button, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with um, the FA Cup preview against Birmingham. Um, I've been Anton, this is Iron United, West Ham drew two weeks tonight, really disappointing. But we, with other results around us, we're sitting 10th in the league with 20 points, uh, three points from Leicester City in seventh place. What's really disappointing is at one point we were three or four points from Manchester United, now we're 10 points away, just in the matter of a week and a half, which is really disappointing. But hey ho. We're West Ham, aren't we? Welcome to the roller coaster. Come on, your irons.